Something a lot of people may not know about me is that I am an Ekist, meaning I am a member of the religion Ekankar. And I want to give an honest review of what it's like to be an Ekist because I was born into Ekankar. My both of my parents are initiated members, and once I became an adult, I decided to fully become a member myself because you can't be a true member of Ekankar until you're 18, and then that's when you can start to study the discourses. It's come to the point where I don't talk about it anymore. And I don't even share it with anyone because when you Google Ekankar, everything pops up saying it's a cult. It's a cult. Ekankar is a cult. Um, people, I guess they're giving their experience of it being a cult, but I don't even watch it because honestly, if you want to sway someone in a certain direction, you can say anything to basically affect people's mind one way or the other. And I already know what it is because. I was literally born into it, so I just don't even listen to the stories about people saying that. But also, it, whenever I try to、um, share that part of my spirituality with people, I would get well. A few people have looked it up and wanted to kind of save me from it. <laughs> You know, or they just completely lose interest when they look look it up. So I just don't even talk about it anymore. But I'm choosing to do that now because I don't know. I feel called to do it. I just want to say that when you become a member of Ekankar, what that entails. Of is you have to be 18, of course, and you can donate a fee. It's recommended donation fee is sixty dollars, but you can donate less if you don't have that. And what they will do is they will send you a little book, and the book will have lessons in them, and you're supposed to study one lesson per month. And in the lessons, it teaches you about、um, like the nature of soul. It teaches you about dream travel and dream work, and eventually soul travel. So that's why I, you may hear me in my videos talking about soul travel. That's a teaching from Ekankar that I learned. So every month you study your discourse, and you, for twenty minutes a day, you will practice your spiritual exercises, and you know read about like the purpose of life,、uh, the hue chant. But they don't advise to spend hours in meditation or something like that because、uh, Ekankar teaches that you get all the symbolism from spirit that you need in waking life, just as much as in a soul travel and your dream world travel. You know, it, that's basically it. So, <laughs> you get your book, you study every day at home. You do like twenty minutes once or twice a day, and that's it. So, how is that a cult? You can do this without any contact with anyone. I mean, it's not that well of a known path. It's not like there's churches everywhere. There used to be more, but a lot of them have closed down. And if you do go, if you find one in your area. People may get together and do like huge chants. They may study the discourses together if their people are on the same discourse, or they have some kind of like Sunday services sometimes. And that's it. You don't have people calling you, trying to force you to do things. You don't have centers where people all live there, like an ashram or something. There's nothing like that. Which actually, I wish there would be <laughs> because I love to to have like a retreat where you could go and stay. And because I stayed in an an ashram before, and that was amazing. I. I want to give an honest review, so I'm gonna say that I feel like they're even lacking a little bit in support in that way because I wish they had ashrams. <laughs> they do have like twice a year the Mahanta, who is Harold Klemp, who's just just a spiritual leader of the community, will give us a talk. Twice a year, so you can choose to go to Minnesota and listen to the talk and do little classes. But if you're not, if you're an introvert, you get all of the spiritual richness and value of this path just on your own, just reading the discourses. You don't have to talk to anyone for Mekankar ever, and you will still spiritually progress. You don't need any contact with anyone. So, what about that? Is a cult? I have listened to stories of like actual scary cults, like famous cult leaders out there, and some of them would use like religion to brainwash people. They may do it under the guise of like, oh, this is all about Jesus or whatever. And you have these sick people trying to, you know, control people's minds. 
and feed off of them. You have that in basically every religion. Anyone can join a religion, do it under Hinduism even, and say they're a guru. They can do that under any religion. If someone is mentally sick and they want to control people and have a little sex cult or whatever, you can do that under any religion. But I can assure you, if someone were doing that under Ekinkar and the headquarters in Minnesota found out, they'd be not a member of Ekinkar quick and in a hurry, and I'm sure they have some legal kind of protections to stop people from doing things like that. Just like any organization, if someone comes in and and pretends that they're a part of it and they've got a, a sick group together saying that, you know, I'm some kind of Christian preacher and you all have to marry me and um, have my babies and we're all gonna drink this Kool-Aid or whatever, you know, the Christian church I'm sure would denounce them. So what I'm saying is if anyone has come across someone acting like that in the name of Ekinkar, I'm really sorry, but it has nothing to do with Ekinkar itself. There's nothing in the teachings about stuff like that. But I do know that Harold Klimp, the leader of Ekinkar, he, you, you never hear about him in some scandal where he's being adulterous or making people do sick stuff. I mean, he is pretty like mild. He stays out of politics. He's he's an older man now. He just is doing his family thing. You don't, you don't hear of scandals with him. Um I'm but everyone has their own opinion about it, but that's just me as someone born into Ekinkar. I basically haven't seen another Ekist for probably like 6 years or so. Um, I did go on like a a beach retreat a few years ago and honestly we got cheap hotel prices and I spent the whole time just traveling around with my kid (laughs) and I didn't really even go to any of the meetings and when I did see them I'm like oh I should have attended the groups more and they're like oh no you you were a part of it as much as you're supposed to be. Because Ekis don't believe in trying to convince people to join as and like change people's path. Because we know everyone is doing what they're supposed to for their level of consciousness. And if they feel like, you know, Ekinkar is right for them, then it's just their time to, to study it. And it's not something that you can force on someone. And, and you can see, I'm a lifelong member of Ekinkar and I don't even talk about it. I mean, I would love to share it with people. One time I had a partner who was interested in my discourses, but I know that if that doesn't resonate with someone, it's a spiritual violation for me to even talk about it with someone who's not interested. We don't do that in Ekinkar. And I will just talk about some of the benefits of being an Ekist, like the spiritual benefits that I've gained. I've learned to soul travel, meaning I can move into different planes of existence by moving my consciousness into my different bodies on the different planes. And that is priceless. It took me 10 years of practice every single day, 20 minutes a day. I did not give up. Finally, I was able to do it. You just can't give up. You just keep trying. If you know, if you're, if you are an Ekist and you're working on the discourses, just don't give up, you know, do your exercises. Don't be hard on yourself. It'll happen when it's supposed to. I can have personal relationships with deities easily because of what I've learned in Ekinkar with connecting with the Ek masters. So because of that, I can connect with deities very easily. Um, I mean, easily now. It's taken me years. Other benefits are I'm not afraid of death because I know what happens when we translate out of this state into another. I've learned ways to, if I'm in a severe pain or there's a really dangerous situation, I can move my consciousness out and just surrender the whole thing to the Ek or to spirit and then it always works out fine for me. Um, I've learned to respect every spiritual path being an Ekist because I know that there are very many different ways back home to God and that there are so many different belief systems because there are so many different types of souls at different levels. So they just created religions to meet people where they're at, with the language they're at, with the culture they're in, but they all lead to the same place. And Ekinkar says that our path is the most direct path 
to never have to reincarnate again. I don't know if that's true, but it feels very pure to me. The teachings are the most pure thing that I've come into contact with, but you know, it's just not going to be right for everyone because some people aren't there. Now I want to talk about the little criticisms I've, I have because I want to give an honest review. So in Ekankar, it says that once you become an initiated member and you choose to leave Ekankar, that you're, you may have some difficulties in your life path at that point. That's what it says. Um, I think that may be because Ekankar says that it takes a lot of um, lifetimes to get you to the right karma to have the luck to come across the teachings and if you choose to like flout that, you know, it could be a lot of lifetimes before you get the chance to come into contact with Ek again. And as far as things being difficult, maybe it's that if you shift your consciousness in a different path, there's going to be an adjustment period. Just like when you have the Ek initiations, sometimes things can get rough for a bit when you're initiated on a certain circle because your consciousness is getting used to residing more and going like traveling more to a certain plane that that initiation is stationed in. I mean I can see that that may make someone feel afraid of leaving but that can happen in any spiritual path so um, you know it's just a little criticism of mine but it may be completely true. Another criticism I have is that there's not enough young people. It was something that was very popular like in the 60s, I think. And so most members are a bit elderly now. So that can make it hard to get support if you do want to reach out for community. They're mostly older people. And I guess something else that I just will mention is that, so it says that if you harm a member of Ekankar that you will face negative karma, like a, a negative backlash because because Ekis are protected and but it also says that if you talk bad about Ekankar itself or the Mahanta that you can get some negative karma and backlash but that's the same as if you worshipped in an ancient god or you know the christian god or any kind of spiritual path with a deity that oversees it if someone harms a devotee of a deity the deity is going to protect their followers and you know if that means harming back someone who's trying to harm your devotee that's what they do and that's even said in um, the bhagavad gita in hinduism that if you harm one of Krishna's followers, they don't tolerate that and you are going to suffer. So that's in a lot of spiritual paths, but Ekankar does say that. And I guess another criticism is that in Ekankar, it teaches that... Well, this isn't a criticism because it's actually true and it's interesting, but... It's, it doesn't mean that I have chosen not to do this. So it warns against something, and I know that it warns against it. I see that it's true, and I still choose to do it anyway. Um, Ekankar says that the psychic arts are of a lower plane, and that there's a lot of like confusion and misleading within that, and that it's of a higher path to drop the spirit, the psychic arts and go up towards, you know, the more pure teachings. Um, and I've I saw that as well in Hinduism that there's like three major paths. There is the um, more like the goddess path, which is more with like magic and things having to do with manifesting in the physical world. And then there is the path of self-realization that is connected with Shiva where he like meditates a lot and he wants to know his self and he's really trying to discover what he is like his nature as soul and that's one path and the third path is Vaishnava which is uh, following more like the Vishnu or Krishna path which is God realization and so if you are taking the path of like trying to do magic and the psychic arts that is like a lower path so you know Ekankar does talk about that but I still do this <laughs> psychic arts anyway because I did want to learn more about manifesting and taking more control of my physical existence. So I moved a bit away from complete surrender because at times I feel like I need to be more in charge of what's going on in my life. But then at some times when I'm completely uh, overwhelmed by 
things out of my control like mostly in my mind like my mind has become out of control where it's just thinking like negative thoughts if there's a trauma bond or something like that then I will just surrender my mind to God um, even to Krishna because I love all the deities and Ekankar helped me to see that each deity exists every single god of every religion it exists and the, the gods are established on certain planes of existence so an Ekankar just says that what we call God is the Sugmad which is like all of spirit and you want to just keep moving up the planes of existence to get the purest uh, teachings but like like say for example the Christian God this is kind of funny and can be insulting for Christians but in Egenkar it is taught that the Christian God is called the dual-headed God the call Naranhan and um, the call is both God and the devil it has two faces it's dualism so that God is real yes the Christian God is real there they pray to their God that is real even though I'm not a Christian I wouldn't do that but I believe in all of the gods and um, Ekankar says when a Christian passes on that they will go to their realm that the Christian God is on and that God may trap the souls there for a time and make them think that they've reached their final destination you know they're in heaven there's nothing beyond that and so if they since that's what they believe in that's the God that they're worshiping they will go to that God but eventually they will see that there actually is something beyond that and then they can move up the spiritual teaching so I love all religions I don't love what people do with them sometimes but I believe in all deities and I respect them all and this is coming from someone who is a lifelong Ekist, someone who would not try and convince someone to, to be an Ekist. Like, that's not what we believe in. So I know if anyone is behaving that way, they're not a true Ekist because that kind of like cult, like convince people thing is the exact opposite of what we believe in. That's why I'm like, <laughs> I'm not gonna listen to these uh, cult stories because that is not our teachings. Like that is someone else with some ego issue. That is not uh, Harold Klemp or Paul Twitchell. That's not the Mahanta, that's not Ekankar. So, so that's my uh, little talk about is Ekankar a cult? And I'm gonna say no, it's a beautiful teaching and um, it's not for everyone. That's all I have to say. Anyway, so I hope you all have a great day or night. I just wish you clarity on your journey, on your spiritual path. Thanks, bye.